sorry. Um, do you, you wouldn't happen to have the, the second half of a horse in stock, would you? Oh, I'm afraid not, but we do have... Tony, Deborah, uh, Perry, Chris and Samantha. Great. Okay. Welcome back, class. All here. Uh, now, have you all had a relaxing week? Um, have your stress levels been? Uh, Chris, how, how have you been? Yeah. Uh, work Work is a bit difficult, but I was mostly fine. Excellent. Okay. Well, well, this week, I thought we'd try a little exercise, okay? Um, Perry, what's uh, what's a nice relaxing exercise for you? Well, well I, I like going you know, long drives in the countryside. I... Great idea, Perry. Okay, everybody... Imagine we're going for a drive in the countryside. So just lean back, close your eyes and relax. I want you to imagine we're all coasting along a lovely smooth country road. It's a beautiful sunny day. There are birds tweeting. We can see all the lovely beautiful farm animals in the field around us. The beautiful tranquil horse is so elegant and majestic. In fact, it's such a lovely day. Why not make it a convertible? We're driving in a convertible, okay? We can feel the breeze blowing in our hair as we speed by the serene beautiful scenery. We've just broken a red light. Don't want to alarm anybody. Just keep relaxing. Imagine the horses. Samantha, your knees are digging into the back of my seat if you could just move your move your seat back there we go that's fine lovely horses and the breeze the sunshine just bear in mind the car's rented tony so i'd prefer if you didn't use the the cup holders no it's fine it's fine rolling green hills the sun beating down if everybody could just buckle their seat belts because i i think there's a police car tailing us since we broke that red light back there flocks of tweeting birds he's signaling us to pull over remember i answered a fill speak when spoken to okay a light dew lingering on the long grass uh, hello officer uh, yes, it is. Oh, it is a lovely day. Uh, we're just going for a drive, making the best of the weather, you know? Hmm? Stolen? This car? No. Go, 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 go! Just look at the growling fields speeding by us and the officer racing back to his car. It's okay. He probably won't catch us. We've gotten a head start. Cows grazing in the meadows with their calves. We're fugitives. Ignore the banging coming from the boot, Deborah. He's probably just coming too. Lovely. Deep calming breaths. We're all having a good time, okay? Let's just ignore the fact the police are trying to shoot out the tires. Just let the breeze carry us towards our destination, which is increasingly seeming like a hideout in Brazil, which is just lovely this time of year. It's absolutely beautiful. Not a cloud in the sky. They've hit Perry. Deborah, just roll his body at the door. He's dead right now. He's gone to us. He's dead. All the lovely barns and farmhouses flying past. We're abandoning the car in a lay-by. Look at the lovely woodland to our left. A herd of deer. We're burning the car now. Feel the warm, soft glow radiating from the flaming upholstery as it destroys any trace of our DNA. Don't get too close. It will burn you too. The gentle breeze is fanning the flames. It's too late for the guy in the boot. He hasn't made it, Deborah. A stream. Burbles nearby, snaking its way through a field of wild daffodils. I took the precaution of providing some Bulgarian passports. Tony, if you could hand them out, Chris, you'll be known as Vikram from now on. Okay, you're Vikram, Chris, okay? Deborah, you can take Perry's too. Smell the lovely aroma of freshly cut grass, nice and calm. It's every man for himself. We'll spread out. Remember, make yourself a low target. The sun is just setting over the horizon. As the police, they, they are shooting to kill. Okay, class. Well, it's it's been a very productive session. I hope you were thoroughly relaxed. Deborah, you you can stop crying now. Um, same time again next week. Okay. <sighs> Nigel and Sandra may appear to be like any other long-term married couple in the mornings, getting up around nine, brushing their teeth, preparing breakfast, and treating the post. Bill, bill, um, insurance. Oh, 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 Nigel! We've got a letter from Dougie! Nigel and Sandra receive one letter a month from Dougie, a Canadian accountant. But Dougie isn't a regular pen pal. They met Dougie through a new charity sponsoring service. Dear Nigel and Sandra, hope all is well. So glad to hear about your hammock. However, I wish things were going as well for me as they seem to be for you guys. My wife has left me for another uh, man. We uh, we started sponsoring Dougie about uh, a bit over a year ago, and we've been getting letters ever since, you know. You know, it's just nice, you know, to get them and read them over the breakfast table, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. a nice pick-me-up yeah. in the morning, you know. We started uh, because we were going through a bit of a rough patch a while ago. Uh, we needed something that would help us through that, you know, just make us feel a bit better about ourselves. And uh, Dougie, Dougie certainly helped with that. Oh, yeah. 
I told you in my last letter about how I was worried that my wife was having an affair with a man who claimed to be Jeff Goldblum's stunt double in Jurassic Park. Well, my suspicions were confirmed when I saw that she'd had some of his love letters framed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, compared to him, you know, we're high flyers. Yeah, I thought we had a bad, but, you know, it's not, it's not like Dougie does. I mean, reading about his, but his frankly awful life, it really makes us feel better about ourselves. I mean, how best to describe his life? Um, you know, miserable. Terrible. Dreadful. You know, absolutely horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's shit, isn't it? I mean, Dougie, Dougie has a shit life. And reading about well, it. Well, it just it helps us, you know. She's always liked dinosaurs, and he said that he had the keys to Jurassic Park, and she somehow thought that Jurassic Park was a real place, so now I've lost a wife. He even signed his letters to her as Jeff Goblin's stunt double. Imagine the shame of your wife leaving you for a man who has nothing to offer but the promise of fake dinosaurs. Of course, uh, you know, there was one before Dougie, actually. Uh, we used to sponsor a little African kid. Um, oh, yeah, what, what, was, was, his he, what name? was he called again? It was Ton, Ton or something. Ton. Like his, oh, we always could never pronounce it, could we? No, we never could. We just used to call him Barry. Yeah, we used to get, you know, photos, you know, and little, let, little letters from him, you know. Awful, terrible English. You know, no idea what was going on about it half the time. He should have been in school, I suppose, Oh, yeah, he Andrew. should have been, you know. But judging from the photos he sent us, he spent most of his time just sticking around outside. We got a little photo of him here, actually. Uh, oh, it's a group photo. Oh, yeah, um, that, yeah. Oh, yeah, look, there he is. That's him. Oh, it, no, I thought was that one over there? What? No, that really? No, I, I think that's him. Oh, we, we can never tell which one Barry was, really. No, know? he's yeah, he's more of an, an idea to yeah, us. Yeah, kind of yeah. sad concept that we had. Yeah, and you know Barry's letters used to make us just feel really good about ourselves, you know. And, and you're hearing about his poor sort of a life. Of course, you know, oh, things just went the same after Geldof stuck his nose in. You know, he seemed Barry seemed a lot happy after Geldof got involved. I can't remember the exact details, you know, but I think Bob Geldof made him a well or sent him a goat or something, and you know, Barry seemed quite chuffed about it. And I mean, you know, that just ruined it for us. He was too chipper. Yeah, we cancelled Barry's drag debit soon after that. You know, I mean, we just moved on to Dougie. She said I could post the divorce proceedings to his address. But how am I supposed to track down a guy I only know as Jeff Goldblum's stunt double? All this and my father's death is really starting to hit home. Oh, by the way, my father died. It was long and slow, but that's what most of us have to look forward to. He left my brother his house in his will, and he left me a canoe shop. He never even owned a canoe shop. Mentally, he was pretty far gone towards the end. His best moment? Uh, well, he doesn't really have any good moments. You know, it's the b- bad ones make us feel great. You know, like a couple of letters ago, um, he told us he was walking along a beach and he found one of the... What are they, oh, you know, this message in the bottle things. <laughs> yeah, and he, um, he's so excited. Um, couldn't believe his luck, that sort of thing. And then he opened it and it just said, you're an anus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, oh, that was a good one. Yeah, that I mean, what made good. it much better, though, was he, I, can almost, I can almost see his face just drop, you know, when he opened the bottle. So much hope in his eyes. He was then greeted by a message calling him an you know, just brilliant it was. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that time he spent his pension fund on a hot air balloon? Oh yeah, he called an investment, so he did. <laughs> he got it caught in a windmill within minutes. Said he was spinning around for hours like some kind of wicker Ferris wheel before the firemen come down. <laughs> I mean, apparently they were just stood there, you know, filming him for a good 30 minutes before they're trying to help. Imagine that, having to stay at work at his age because you crashed life savings into a windmill. Bloody great. Work has been awful this week. We had a charity fun day in the office and I convinced Tony to eat three kilos of porridge in ten minutes. Paramedics pronounced him dead on the spot. We were taking it pretty badly, so we organised a team bonding trip to a natural history museum. It's what Tony probably would have wanted. The tour guide had quite a throaty voice and I kept getting flashbacks of Tony's outy gurglings and before I knew it I was performing the Heimlich manoeuvre on a Neanderthal in a display. The tour guide mistook my heimlicking uh, for something more sinister, and they banned me for life. I mean, I don't know what we do without, you know, Dougie's letters. Yeah, yeah, they really help us, you know. It's the little things in life, reading about his awful life. Yeah, it's just a nice pick-me-up for us, you know. know, I mean, mean, you you know, how can you feel bad about, you know, your own life when you read about his? Despite all the hardships I've suffered, I feel things are looking up for me. The museum undercharged me for the damages to the Neanderthal. Hopefully, it's the start of my fortunes changing. Yours sincerely, Dougie. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, what's that bit at the bottom there? Oh, oh right. Uh, P.S. I contracted hepatitis from the family rocking chair. <laughs> oh, Dougie. Dougie. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Oh, bless his heart.
<clears throat> Buckley, get over here. Hey, what's the latest on the story? Yeah, they found Jeremy Irons' DNA on a sea stack. My God, I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, I think you can get it before you go to print, Buckley. Oh, it, sh- it shouldn't be too much trouble, you know, as expected, really. Great. Oh, and uh, Clark wants to see you in his office ASAP. Do, do you know what for? Probably just looking for some company. It's been, uh, you know, kind of lonely since Lois left him. Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Cash? Sure did. Come on in and sit down on, on a seat, ideally. Uh, end of your first week. How are you finding the place? Have you found your feet yet? What, what, have, you, what have you found exactly? Oh, um, well, I, I find it great working here. Yeah, uh, yeah People you do. are very nice. Oh, you betcha. We are. Um, you know, what about the work, okay? Well, how, are you, uh, how are you finding the work? The big W. Oh, um, you know, it can, yeah. it can be difficult, but yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. for the most part... Well, listen, okay, I, I know what it's like to be throwing a big stinker of a report from the suits upstairs. Uh, well, actually, it's for now. Um, there is a reshuffle. Um, just, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Josh, uh, you know, Josh Bakewell? Uh, yeah, Mr. Bakewell. Well, you know, I call him Josh. You want a first name basis. It's a lateral thing. You know, he calls me Mr. Kent, but he, he could call me Clark, but he doesn't. I don't, I don't, respects me, I guess. Um, well, he came to me and he said, he said, uh, listen, Mr. Kent, I need to do a 10-page report on the smallest operational fog corner in the country. And I said, I, I told him, I said, listen, Josh, Okay, I'm very busy trying to trying to unclog the ham from the printer after the Christmas party, which is mostly you're doing, allegedly. But listen, I'll do it. I'll write the report. But bear in mind, I'm not Superman. Okay, I'm not Superman. Right. No, of course, of course not. Well, you know, don't don't jump to conclusions. Uh, sure. I've... I just don't believe the rumors. Sorry, what what rumors? Oh, there are rumors. I, I haven't heard any rumors. Good. Mr. Ken. Yeah. Wise. Keep, no. your, keep your head down. Work. Yeah. No, there, there are no rumors about you in the office. Well, you know. You've only been here a week. I'd have to trust a new guy like you with a clangor like that one. Just say, you know, mix, mingle, open yourself up. You know, socialize. Just get around. Talk, just talk Sorry, to people. Sorry, Mr. Huh? Mr. Kent, I don't mean to interrupt. It's just I'm expecting a call. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, just, you know, go ahead. Hop to it. Do what you have to do. And uh, remember, if they ask, um, uh, I'm not I'm not Superman. Sorry, if who asked? The, the phone people. Right, it's mostly about invoices. I don't think they'd be interested. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. yeah, cool. Uh, thanks, Good. though. Yeah, no problem. <sighs> Is Auntie Kent? That was a close one. He's a, he's a, he's a wise one. Breathe, relax. Just put on the. Uh... <laughs> homosexual, damn homosexual, and you, you massive homosexual. Oh, well, Claude, what are you doing? It's all these damn homosexuals about. There's one A, you, you bubbling bugger. Oh, Claude, you can't say that. You're being a bastard, Claude. What am I? How, how, how am I being a bastard? Well, I'm afraid, Claude, that yelling at children in a playground to accuse them of being homosexual is generally considered these days to be something that only a bastard would do. But you used to do it to me, the, the, the yelling. Yes, I did. But that was before I started eating these little pots of yogurt. And these little pots of yogurt contain ginglius extractimum, a culture which is shown to decrease your bastard levels by up to 90%. I've been eating it for three weeks now, and I'm already 70% less of a bastard, which has made it all the more obvious that you, who has eaten none of it, are a frankly massive bastard, Claude. But, but, but what if they are homosexual? What well, again, due to my drastic debastardification, I now realise that it's okay if they are, and certainly not something to yell about in a park. So what should I be yelling at? Well, again, it's really only bastards who yell in parks at all, Claude. But if you have to, then you should maybe just scream compliments at a chaffinch, nice plumage, fantastic beak, that sort of thing. Wow, so what? If I eat that yogurt over there, then I won't want to say, let's say, um, yell at that kid over there and don't and call him a chubby cat cat who looks like a haunted scarecrow, and then say his mom is a fantastic pair of breasts. Then would that make me a bastard? Well, let me just check. Mmm... Mm, no, no, that would make you an astronomically enormous bastard, Claude. Dear God, so if I start eating that yogurt, will people stop hating me, or will my wife come back? Yes, the unique culture of Jinglikush Skudgum will make your wife love you again. Hold on, the unique culture of... The unique monoculture, Jinglikush Skudgum up. Okay, what? Skudgum up. It's just... I, I... It doesn't... I just... I just... I thought you said it was called the uh, Jinglikush Skudgum. It doesn't matter, just shut up and buy lots of it, you sad, empty bastard. <laughs> Need money advice. I got your dollary days and your dollary dance, man. Ooh, Jesus. Coming up on the History Network, you think you knew France, huh? Think again, bozo. It was previously believed that Louis XVI met his end on the 21st of January 1793, after the newly formed National Assembly ordered him to be guillotined. However, recent evidence that has come to light suggests that he was actually poisoned by his trusted baker Samuel several months prior, and the figure executed in his place was little more than a tarted up gibbon in a wig. The following is believed by scholars to be an accurate reenactment of the demise of Louis XVI. Hey, bonjour, Louis. Uh, je peux pas baker un cake. Samuel. Oui. Je peux pas baker un cake. Would you like to uh, eat a little bit of my cake? When do you have that moustache, Samuel? This moustache is a family heirloom that has been passed down from my grandmother via mother down onto my face when she dropped it on Tuesday. You're a man. Yeah, he's a little bit of a man. 
Is that a challenge? What's in, what are you holding? Look at those! I'm what? a man! What are you holding, Samuel? A biscuit. What is it? Is it I like... Well, uh, what's... It's a biscuit that, <laughs> sir, has baked for my overlord, Louis. What's it called, Samuel? It is a biscuit made of my affection. Well, I can smell that, but... Why Why? Why now? I'm, I'm finished, my dinner. Because it is a, a surprise for Lord. I don't like surprises. I told you this. Death cake to the emperor! <laughs> now on the History Channel, Genghis Khan, a Mongolian maniac, or a misunderstood swan. You just... Oh, yeah. Uh, co- come in. You, you wanted to see me, Mr. Kent? Sure did, Buckley. Uh, come in. Yeah, uh, sit down on, on the chair. Okay, so I'm very busy, though. But... Oh, oh, mind, mind that. I don't know how that got there. <laughs> It's the Superman costume. Oh, God. Got red-handed. What must you think now? How about all the rumours and everything? For Halloween? Yeah, I love Halloween. It's January, Mr. Yeah, got to plan ahead, you know. All, uh, very important to sort these things out. It's not a bit early, no? January's a month of planning. Uh, so that's what we call around here. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you would have uh, heard that if you'd be mixing. Have you Have you been uh, mixing? Yeah, sure, I suppose so. It, it's, 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 it's like, you know, it's important. It's like, you know, the apartheid. Keep everything uh, apart. Oh, got a problem. You know, the, together, everything's gravy. They, you know, they love it. I'm sorry? And no, 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 something uh, different about me, Buckley? Um, the face area. You you shaved? No, nope, no. You no. didn't shave? No, I, no, I, I, I did, but I, I always shave. Oh, sorry. Um, don't apologize. It's, it's routine. Uh, come on, you worked here a week. You gotta be more observant with these things. So, these is things. it about shaving? No, it's about glasses. You wore glasses. Yeah, yeah. It, okay, this yeah. isn't this one working. Okay, um, I got contact lenses. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed. Now. I used to wear those, you those big chunky glasses. Yep, lost them. Not literally. They're, they're in the drawer. But uh, you know, it's contacts now. Uh, doctor's orders. The fashion doctor. Uh, or, you know, because, uh, those, those big frames, they were kind of coming back into style with all, you know, the kids and all that. Really? Uh, uh, probably thanks to me, I guess. You know, trendsetter and so on. Yeah, next everybody will be walking around dressed as Superman. Well, I'll kill him. What? Uh, nothing. R- right, why did you want to see me? Oh, I found the, uh, the bag of paper clips. Didn't know they were missing. Right. That is? Yep. Yeah, okay, see you. Bye. So, uh, what did the uh, clock want to see you about, huh? I have literally no idea what just happened. Do you want a full reference, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. If you let my daughter go Ryan, now... Ryan! Your quiche is getting cold! If you, if you let my daughter go now, that will be the end of it. If not... Stop getting I will, warmer! I'll be down in a minute! That will be the end of it. If not, I will look for you. I'll I will... give it to the dog, will I? Don't give it to the dog! I will, I'll, I'll find you. Dog. Don't give it to the dog, Gene! I'll fight, look, just call me back. 87 6 4 5 7 2 1. Call me back. Right. Meanwhile, back at the Xylophone Emporium. And uh, what would be the main difference between uh, between these two models? Well, and well, this one is a bit more expensive, and uh, as you can see, it has a whole extra scale, meaning that you get a far greater range of sounds oh, from it. Oh, well, uh, well yeah. I'm, ju- I'm just a beginner, really, so I've been looking for anything too fancy. Okay, well, um, you know, I would advise you to go with the, the cheap model, and then maybe down the road you can try maybe invest in a more expensive one. Yeah! Here we are, me hearties! Next match this spot! Oh, get ready to be up to your tits and doubloons! Oh, lads! <laughs> Who oh, get ready? We're gonna be rolling in it before long. <laughs> what? 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 what yeah, yeah. Sorry, lads. Put your tits away. Just bits of xylophone here. You yeah, are just bits of xylophone again. Back to the ship. Oh, sorry about that. Two for the road, please. Oh, thanking you. Right, oh lads. Oh, oh we be pirates, pirate away. Pirates are we, pirate no day. We be pirates, pirate no way. Spider looks none of us are gay. Every week, Jesus Christ. You called again, Mr. Oh, Ke- Christ! Don't worry, Buckley. It's um, just testing out the costume, seeing if the old girl still fits. Hey, could you um, could you just uh, zip me up? Oh God, yeah, sure. Where's the where's the zip? Um, it's around the back. Oh great. Just, okay. um, yeah. Oh, it's certainly yeah. snug, Mr. Kent. By design. It makes me uh, sleek, like like a dolphin. That's oh, right. Uh, sh- shouldn't there shouldn't there be a cape as well? Yep, it's being dry cleaned. Oh, dog was using bedding in my car. Filthy. I mean, it's just... right. Is there anything else, or did you just call me in here to uh, to help? Oh, just you? um, just to catch up. You know, seeing you're getting along. How's the report about the history of the hammocks coming? We're oh, looking it's, forward it's, to uh, it. I mean... it's, it's a bit difficult. Um, it's a pretty sparse subject. Buckley, actually... okay, it's not all going to be plain sailing. But let me tell you, okay, 
put the work in now. Take it down the road. It will pay off. You know, it will bear. Um, you, know, you can reap the, the fruit, harvest the fruit. Okay, getting bogged down there. Okay, forget agriculture. Okay, but look, Buckley, um, you know, we have a fun times too. I mean, the Christmas party, for example. You know, uh, you weren't there, of course, but you know, um, you know Simon, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was there. And, uh, you know, Sandra, yeah? She was there? Yep, you know, all there. Right. The whole gang. Yeah. I mean, it was great fun. We did a... Uh, we did a you know celebrity lookalikes where you know Simon was uh, was Bruce Willis, uh, Sandra got Jennifer Aniston I believe, and uh, Carl from Accounts, Dana Ross and Supremes. Don't know how it happened. You know, it still worries me actually. Although what worried me more was uh, Susan, Su- E.T. Oh, Susan. Oh yeah, left since as well voluntarily. Don't know why. Um, it's a shame really. Um, who do you think? Uh, who do you think I got? Uh, was it <laughs> Superman Benny Chance? Oh. What made you think of that, Buckley? It was, it was just a hunch, sir. You got good hunches. Okay, I like him. Um, but you know, guess what? You're not the only one that thought that. Okay, in the party, people were pointing at me, coming up and saying, "Oh, Clark, you look a bit like Superman." Were, were you wearing the costume? Well, yeah, but that is because of that, though. Is probably more about the face, really? I, I suppose a bit. All right then. Who do you think looks like Superman in the office then? <sighs> uh, I don't know. I, I don't really think anybody here looks like him. Oh come on, you know, yeah, like no one really knows. What it looks like, you know, it could be anybody. Could he work in the office? Could he even be right under you know, your nose? Is Neil Superman? Oh, cock off, Neil. Are you insane? I mean, Neil's a borderline simpleton. I mean, he generally wears underpants from the outside, not just for laughs. Well, not anymore. No idea where he still works, actually. Just part of the scenery at this stage. Are, are there rumours about Neil? No, there's, there's no rumours about Neil, Mr. Kent. Well, come on. Okay, there's going to be rumours about somebody. I saw you mingling out there. At your insistence. Exactly. Now, dish to dirt. What's being said? Anything about me? Come on, well, Buckley. I, I'll make it worth your while. Please zip it back up, Mr. Kent. Fine, fine. We spill the beans, okay? Uh, you know, you won't get in trouble for this. Like, I won't rat anybody out, you know. I won't punish whoever said it, I promise. Well, okay, there is one rumour about you, Mr. Kent. It was about something in your past. Ah, my secret's getting out. The wolves are at the door. It's, oh, yeah. it was about the uh, team bonding day at the windmill? Oh, come on, that again. I mean, shoot, shoot me first. That's madness. What? Who told you that? Oh, you said you wouldn't punish anybody. Well, it was Simon. Oh, come on, Mr. Kent, don't be angry. Of course I'm going to get angry. I know I'm not the best boss in the world, but, you know, I, I, I try. It's not like I'm, you know... It's Superman, yeah, I know. How'd you know? Know what? That I'm Superman. You're Superman. Damn it, Buckley. I can't hold up your integration any longer, okay? All right, fine. I admit it. I am Superman. Okay, you happy now? Okay, you've, you've cracked me. You've cracked Superman, Buckley. There, there's no way you're Superman, Keep Mr. your Kent. voice down, okay? You, damn it. Why don't you send a, run a memo to the whole office? Okay, I tried to hide it from everybody for their own good. But you couldn't let me live in peace, could you? You couldn't let this leave me be. And as soon as you arrive, you start stooping around, probing me with your questions, spreading rumours, noticing all the small things, the slip-ups, and the one day I forget my glasses... Who's in? Buckley. In like a shot. Oh, Mr. Kent. And then you come in here, tear the whole place up, make it look like I had a tornado in for a meeting, upturn everything, until you find my costume, the very costume I kept hidden for ten years. And in one week, Buck, in one week. I mean, I hope you're happy. Mr. Kent, your costume is just sitting on the chair. Just like you are now, Buckley. But you know what? I- I'm not going to wear you. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to fire you. What? You know too much, Buckley. I can't risk my secret getting out. Okay, but you're good, though. I mean, you're damn good. Which why it's a shame. Oh, and your report about the hammock's overdue by an hour. That's because you've been calling me into your office every other minute. Be that as it may, okay? Your tardiness is unacceptable. Okay, clear your desk by Monday. Now get in my office. I have to collect my cape. Mr. Kent! What is it, Neil? We got a big story. We just heard that Alan Titchmarsh drove a voxel over a sack of pirates. Uh, why are you dressed as Superman, Mr. Uh, Kent? Uh, why do you think I'm dressed as Superman? Uh, huh? I, are you sad again? Lois is gone, Neil, okay? She, she took the kids. Oh. Do you want to hug it out? Please. There, there. So, am I still fired, or...? Get in here, Buckley. Make it a grouper. Uh. Neil, those aren't fresh underpants, are they? It's okay, Neil. It's okay. Now, I know it's your heart set on some shares in a flooded living copper mine, but Mommy and Daddy couldn't afford it, so maybe next year or Christmas. Hmm? Mom! But we have got you something even better and thankfully less Bolivian themed. Close your eyes, honey. Are you ready? Happy birthday! Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Now, I hope it's the right one because the man that shot it just came out. Oh, wow! Thanks, Mom! It's an Xbox! Yay! The Xbox to spot me, hearties! <laughs> Oh, 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 the blues galore, so there be. Oh, oh, oh there be gold and everything. No, oh, what a booty we will find. Yeah, yeah, what? What? Yeah, yeah. Just bits of wizardry in a box. What the fuck are you doing? You're the worst dad ever. You ruined my birthday. You 
twat! Timmy, don't call me a twat. Go to your quarters. Shut up, Jeff. You ruined his birthday. Now stop pretending to be a pirate for the love of God. Pretending? I never. I'm a pirate through and through. No, you're Jeff. You work in IT and Lipton solicitors. This is a house, not a boat. And if anything, you're scared of water. And hey, are you wearing my blouse on your head? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll buy him another Xbox. Good. I'll be in my cabin if you Jeff. Spare room, sorry. Oh, we be Jeff. Sorry.